Hello and welcome to this short talk on Iris Murdoch at St Anne's. I'm Miles Leeson and I'm the director of the Iris Murdoch Research Centre at the University of Chichester. Iris joined St Anne's in 1948, having spent a year prior in Cambridge studying philosophy and she joined St Anne's as a tutor in philosophy and she taught moral and political philosophy through the works of Aristotle, Kant, Descartes, Berkeley, Locke, Hume and many others, canonical philosophers. In 1952 she was uh, promoted to um, a full fellow and she spent many happy years there until in 1963 she left the college to teach at the Royal College of Art in London. During her 15 years or so at the college she wrote many works including fiction of course for which she's best known uh, but also many works of philosophy that uh, had a real and major impact on the field. She also, of course, taught a great many students, some of whom are still alive and have um, spoken of their experiences working with Murdoch. The novels. She wrote several novels prior to the publication of Under the Net in 1954, I think she had four or five novels that she um, abandoned. But as you can see, during her time at St Anne's, it was a really fruitful period for her, publishing Under the Net um, right the way through to The Unicorn in 1963. Perhaps the most important novel of this period, if we were to pick one, and perhaps the best one if you don't know her work, would be The Bell uh, from 1958, which she called her lucky novel and draws on a great many experiences of her own life. Um, and also those of others that she knew, although, of course, she doesn't fictionalise uh, people directly into characters in the novels. The first five novels are all experiments in form and in genre, and she's drawing on the realist uh, writers of the 19th century, um, her own Gothic imagination, as well as bringing in her own moral and philosophical interests, although she would later go on to claim that these are not philosophical novels. Certainly it's worth pointing out that these all received favourable reviews in the press and indeed after 1958 um, she begins to allocate more time to her fiction writing. It's incredible the amount of time that she has uh, to give also to her students and also to her philosophical writing. Uh, I, I'm always amazed looking at her work how she managed to fit in the time to also socialise and have so many varied relationships and friendships both at the college with um, colleagues such as Margaret Hubbard and Peter Aidy but also spending a good deal of time in London as well and of course in 1956 she marries her husband John Bailey who she'll be with for the rest of her life. But it was perhaps for her philosophy at the college that Murdoch was best known certainly at the beginning of her work there and this short extract from Vision and Choice in Morality, which was published in 1956, I think, um, is perhaps arguably the most important of the lot that she published um, during those years. I say that because it sets up the ideas that she'll um, expound most fruitful, I think, in the Sovereignty of Good collection, which comes out in 1970, and has a major impact on what she'll go on to do later in her magnum opus, Metaphysics as a Guide to Morals, that's published in 1992. One of her major ideas is about clarity of vision. And she says in Vision of Choice and Morality, I've argued that insofar as ethics sets out to be analysis rather than exploration, it can attain only a precious neutrality like that of history and not the pure neutrality of logic. Ethics surely is in fact, as it has always been, both exploration and analysis. What she wants us to do is pay attention to the individual and have a vision of the individual that allows us to perceive them in the right way. She published many essays during her time um, at St Anne's and the vast majority of them could be found in this wonderful collection, Existentialists and Mystics, Writings on Philosophy and Literature that came out in 1997. Um, I do recommend that to you if you're interested in Murdoch and philosophy and indeed in um, post Second World War philosophy in Britain. It's a real essential, I think, for getting to grips with Murdoch. And of course her teaching. She had many students and made many friends whilst at St Anne's and some of her students are still around to tell the tale and here are two of them. I was I'm delighted to host them at the University of Chichester in 2018. On the left, Devaki Jain, an economist um, and a, a, a famous academic now work, living and working in India and on the right at the front, uh, Maureen Griffith-Jones and now retired economist 
who went on and worked at, um, at the University of London and both speak of the, the joy of working with Murdoch. She didn't always teach uh, what was going to be on the papers, but they said that what she taught them was to have a critical analytical mind, even if she introduced them to new and various topics or used perhaps ideas or situations that we may have found in a Murdoch novel. All of these ideas became fruitful to us as we in our later lives. But also they found that when they went into their final exams, they could use examples that Murdoch gave them in order to expand and, and, and consider the work that they were going to uh, they were going to have to write on. And I think that's the mark of a really great teacher is you can tailor your teaching methods and your ideas to the students that are in front of you. Maureen talks expansively about being interviewed for Murdoch, interviewed by Murdoch, and thinking about what she would want to do later in life. Uh, how originally she would applied for English, but ultimately changed to PPE, and then would be not only interviewed, but taught by Murdoch during her three years as an undergraduate at St. Anne's. It wasn't just to her students that Murdoch was important, though. Uh, she brought in um, the first real ideas of existentialism into Oxford and published the first major work of uh, uh, commentary on existentialist thought, such romantic rationalist, that came out in 1953. She was also indebted to the, the ideas of her colleagues, Mary Midgley, Elizabeth Anscombe and Philippa Foote, all of whom she studied as an undergraduate and with at, at um, Somerville College. These experiences, these relationships and these ideas are not only fruitful for Murdoch as a person, but also for the development of her own fictional work. And we can see a lot of them being um, revised and expanded and, um, and, uh, and fictionalized to a certain extent, I think, in um, so many of the great novels that would come in the 60s and 70s. And it was into the 1960s, after Murdoch had uh, left for London, that a painting uh, was commissioned. And it's, this painting is currently in the St Anne's art collection. Indeed, I think it hangs in the principal's office at present, which uh, says to me a great deal about um, the regard that Iris Murdoch is held in at St Anne's. She was a wonderful writer, a great critic, a great thinker, a great friend and a great colleague. And indeed, I think, one of the greatest analytical, critical, philosophical and fictional minds, one of the great artists of the second half of the 20th century. <laughs>